So today we're gonna to explain how to understand your YouTube analytics. So we're gonna walk through each of the different tabs and just show you the wealth of information available to you to help you improve each of your videos so that you can get more views, more watch time, and make more money from your YouTube channel. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are at the home for your YouTube studio. Your screen should look something like this. One thing to just kind of keep track of when you're logging in here is your latest video performance. So it'll rank your videos, you know, your last 10 videos and how it's doing. And so you can see over the last four days and nine hours, this one is ranking six. So not doing quite as well as what I would hoped. Kind of average as far as views, click through rate, and a little above average as far as view duration. But then if you cl click on the go to channel analytics or you can click on analytics along the side right here. You know, the thing is with the general screen like this and a lot of the overview statistics, it's really not that useful. This isn't gonna help you make decisions on how to improve your channel. You have to kind of dig one level deeper. It's nice to know how many views, how much watch time subscribers you've gotten compared to the last month. So another thing that's good to look at is the actual the last 48 hours of your channel and so you can see here's how the last 48 hours were and here's actually the last hour this is quite a bit lower than what it is normally for a channel given this is 8 p.m on sunday night the one thing you can do here too is if you if you mouse over any of the videos you can actually see the the stats for specific videos there i'll, I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later but what I wanna get into is some of the, the most important stats for YouTube. And that's essentially, if you understand anything about YouTube analytics, it's this funnel. And so what is your overall click-through rate if YouTube suggests one of your videos? And what's the average view duration? If you can keep both of these numbers really high, YouTube is gonna find people to show your videos to. So what I've seen from more successful channels is this needs to be kind of a minute or so longer before our videos are really gonna to start to take off. I know I'm a little bit boring to watch on YouTube, but it's a work in progress. To understand, hey, if I have a really high click-through rate, if everyone watches all my videos, YouTube is just gonna find more people to show your videos to. You know, the next thing is kind of understanding this chart of where your view's coming from. So is it search, suggested videos, browse, which is essentially the homepage, or external. So if you watched our YouTube SEO video, you'll see that most of our views come from YouTube search, and then down here from actually Google search. So we've done a great job with SEO, but the thing is where we're really lacking right now is suggested and browse videos. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what this can look like on another channel in a little bit. But then if we continue down the reach tab, what you're gonna see is, hey, which playlists are showing your videos. And then what I think a really great wealth of information are within these two bottom ones of traffic source YouTube search and traffic source suggested videos. And so you can go through these suggested videos and see, hey, is there a video that's suggesting, you know, some of my content and I actually don't have a video on that topic or I don't have a video that's super closely related as what it, what it potentially could be. And so some ideas can come out of this. Um, the other thing is you're gonna need a lot more suggested videos actually from your own content. That's another thing that the in our bonus tip when we check out another channel. But then here we are in YouTube search. So within the keywords you show up for YouTube search, the thing is you can find video ideas for future content. So if we scroll through ours, or actually I'll search for it. So we have a video on ConvertKit landing page tutorial, but you'll see if I do control F, and then if I type in um, ConvertKit, and so we just show up for ConvertKit by itself and then ConvertKit tutorial. So this is our landing page tutorial, not the email marketing software as kind of a general tutorial video. And so that could be a video idea to do. Also, we have Google G Suite email videos and they just changed their name. And so we could try changing the, the title and thumbnails to see if this worked but we probably actually wanna create videos actually talking about it as Google Workspace as opposed to G Suite. But if you kind of go through this, you can say, hey, are there topics within this long list that I don't have a video about? So for example, how to upload videos on YouTube from phone. So I'm showing everything from desktop. So I think a lot of people do everything from their phone. And so that's something for us to focus on for future videos. That's just a couple ideas of spending 30 seconds going through the traffic source YouTube search. What I wanna show you now is what it looks like on our Spanish channel. So for those of you who don't know, I'm really boring on YouTube. We only have 6,000 and some subscribers right now. Our Spanish channel has getting close to 200,000 subscribers and gets you know, over half 500,000 views per month. But I wanna show you how powerful suggested videos and browse can be um, for a larger channel. 
And so what I talk about in a lot of our videos is essentially creating a bunch of content within a narrow niche. And I'm gonna show you how powerful that really is. And so again, you can see here in our Spanish channel, we do really well with search, but then you see suggested is way up here. And so what happens, let's go down to suggested videos and click on see more. And so scrolling down, if we mouse over each of these, so that's Laura, my business partner, um, that's her. Um, so is this, so is this, so is this. And so you can see essentially this one's not us, this is, this is, that's not, this is. So you can see out of the top 10, essentially all of them are our own videos and they're all about Instagram. And so this is the power of choosing a niche and just creating 10, 20, 50 videos about one topic is you're gonna have tons of suggested views where someone finds one of your videos and then watches 10. Back to my boring English channel. So we went through the reach tab. The next thing is the engagement tab. So you watched our video, how to increase audience retention. I'll link to that up above right here, but this is one of the most important things. Click-through rate and audience retention. We're gonna talk about click-through rate in a little bit, so don't go anywhere. But what you see here with audience retention, this is actually new from when we did our audience retention video. They've been kind of testing some different ways to show this data. But here are the four important things with audience retention. So your intro, continuous segments, spikes, and dips. So you can see here it ranks your videos as far as still watching after 30 seconds. So this did, video did pretty well where we only lost, you know, 32%. The sub for sub video, you know, essentially two thirds of the people or more had already left within 30 seconds. So this is what not to do. So it's kind of the issue here is a bit of a bait and switch where the thumbnail looks like sub for sub, you're gonna grow. And then I tell people don't do it. And so everyone essentially left right away in the video. So this is something of, hey, having a hook in your videos. We have a whole video on how to create a script for your YouTube videos that'll walk you through basically how to structure your videos as well to increase the, the watch time or audience retention. But you know, having a strong hook at the beginning is essentially what um, how you can help with the intro. Continuous segments. So continuous segment. This is where I have some work to do. You can see here only one video where there's actually a continuous segment where you can see essentially a minute long and no one left. So if you were still left at this point, you continued and watched, you know, during that part of it. My videos are boring. I'm working on it. Um, I want to have more of these when I review this channel with you in a couple of months. Where I think I do well are, and at least a couple of the videos are what are called spikes. And so you can see here, there's only 50% of the audience at 50 seconds, but how is their weight? There's 89% here. So what happens is people are watching all of this multiple times, and that's why this percent goes up. And so you can see like, what did I do here that was, that so many people wanted to watch. And so this is the, the YouTube banner video where I basically set up the different shapes so you can put all of your content so it shows up in the in your YouTube banner correctly. So you can see this section, this section here was rewatch, and then this section here again were a section where people watched a couple of different times. And so go through your videos and say, hey, where were there spikes where I was talking about something that was interesting and people wanted to watch it a few times. The opposite end of that is where you're doing stuff poorly. Again, I have quite a few of those. Again, you know, you can see with this, the upload videos on YouTube is essentially everyone just disappeared here. So I don't know if they just didn't think this would be a tutorial screen share video, but they just, the, the viewership collapsed right there. Again, if we go through, you know, there's a couple sections that people didn't like as far as the, the banner video, the thumbnail video, you can see there's a there's a handful of different dips. And so you wanna go through and say, hey, what am I doing wrong here? Or could I have just deleted that part to, you know, not have those, those drop-offs of the people continuing to watch. And so this is essentially with the engagement, you know, probably the most important thing. Obviously, again, here's some of your overall stats of watch time and view duration, but the those stats aren't as helpful as here are the really good and really bad things that you're doing, retaining your audience. You can also see like which of the end screens are doing well, which playlists, when you include cards in your videos, which ones people are clicking on. So this Squarespace tutorial one has done well. The email marketing for beginners has done okay. I'm moving on from engagement. So if we go into the audience tab, so this, I would say, again, the overall stats, one of the things, if this number is really high, so if you can get people to watch five of your videos, it's never gonna be quite that high, but if they watch a couple or it's more than 1.3, 
you know, that means you're keeping people on YouTube for a long time and YouTube loves to see that. But more importantly is this section or sections down here where when, what time of day are people online for your videos? And so what you can see here for our channel is essentially around eight or nine o'clock. It starts to be a little bit deeper of a purple and then around 11, 12, one o'clock, you'll see is the, the peak time. So obviously if we were to put up a video tomorrow, today, Sunday, I wouldn't want to publish at noon because I just miss these two, like the two best times of the day. And so we generally try to put up our videos around, you know, so eight or nine o'clock at night. Another thing's important when you're thinking about what time to upload your videos is where in the world is your audience? And so you can see a third of our audience is in the US, but 10% is in India. And so one of the things here that I actually, before, uh, recording this video, I, I had no idea. It's like, what time it is, is it in India? So the thing is, so if I say I want to upload at 8 a.m. Eastern time in India. So I can see that 8 a.m. Eastern is 6.30 in India. And so, you know, if I'm putting up at 8 a.m., this 10% of my audience still has a chance to view it the same day as opposed to the next day. One of the things is if I had half of my audience in Europe, you know, I wouldn't wanna be putting videos up at 6 p.m. Eastern because that means that everyone's in bed in Europe and, and they're not gonna see it till the morning. And so maybe earlier in the day. So again, kind of checking out this chart, you know, and just kind of checking it with the geographies. You know, moving back to kind of the, the overview tab, again, I, you know, the, the overall stats aren't super useful, but you'll see this in a couple of places around the YouTube analytics of see more. And so the great thing is here, you're gonna see, they're gonna say, you know, right now it's sorted by view of which of our videos has the most views. The thing is, if there's other information you're looking for that's not on this chart right now, you can just add metric. So one of the things that I really like to see is the average view duration. And so I know some of my videos aren't great and are boring and people are leaving. You can see which of those are actually, maybe people are watching and the ones not so much. Also, we have a free YouTube masterclass. It's an hour long training with a ton of tips on how to grow your channel in 2021. If you're interested in signing up, I'll put a link down below in the description. So the one thing that I promised just a little bit ago was the click-through rate of your video. And that's the most important thing of people actually clicking on and watching your videos. And so if you have a low click-through rate, that means YouTube doesn't wanna really promote your video because they put it on someone's screen and no one clicks on it. So that's kind of a waste of real estate. And so here I just clicked on sort my, my videos by click-through rate. And so the, the, the perfect match here is high click-through rate, lots and lots of watch time. But what you're gonna see here for this top video as far as imp impression click-through rate is the YouTube video. You can see people after I started sharing my screen just dropped off from this video. And so here the average, average view duration is less than two minutes. Um, but you can see this thumbnail, you know, very clear YouTube upload title goes along with the thumbnail and so people click on it. But my video sucked. Oh, before I forget, we do have a video on how to create great thumbnails for your YouTube videos. I'll link that up above right here. But if you do, one, if you learn one thing from this video is you should spend twice as much time on your thumbnails because if you're getting a bunch of extra clicks on it, you could essentially double your views and YouTube doesn't actually have to show your videos to more people. And so again, kind of just going through which of your videos have a high click-through rate. And then if you go down here to say, for some reason, the this audience retention video, one, it's really good, you should check it out, but I don't know, the thumbnail is not good for some reason. And so again, just kind of go through these, figure out, you know, as far as click-through rates, you know, what worked, what didn't work. So you can actually go through and update your thumbnails. And that's something we recommend doing. There's actually a few of our videos where I'm gonna go and fix the thumbnails over the next week or two weeks. So one thing you can update your thumbnail. So if you see some of these numbers are really, really low, put a new thumbnail up there, see what happens. And then you can kind of review the click-through rate on a video over time. And if you see a big spike when you change the thumbnail, you're like, well, that thumbnail worked better than the last one. You know, the other thing I wanna take a look at here is so obviously the average view duration, you can have an idea, you know, we've talked about a little bit more on like the best and worst videos of what that is, um, but you can see here kind of the average view duration. The other thing that's really important is, you know, when you're looking to grow your channel, you want subscribers. So the in an ideal world, you have 
videos in a narrow niche and someone watches two or three of them, then they subscribe and then they love all your future content because it's related to those other videos. So, you know, you can see here which of the videos we're getting lots of subscribers for. So you can see, unfortunately, we're getting a lot from G Suite still. It, these aren't, I'm not sure that they're watching a lot of our new content, but you can see at least, you know, we've been putting out a lot of YouTube content recently. And so it's great to see that this video is number two over the last 28 days as far as number of subscribers. And then this one is in fourth place. And so over, over time, you'll see, you know, we're, we're getting more and more subscribers that are interested in what our future content is going to be about. So that's a lot of the kind of overall stats. So the, the thing is, if you're in the the 48 hours of like the, the real time views, or if you just click on the content tab, you can then go into, you know, the analytics for one of your videos. Maybe that let's look at this one. Let's go back. Um, what is doing really well right now? Yeah, let's take a look at the, the YouTube banner video. And so a lot of the information that we saw kind of pulled together from the entire channel list by video. There's a wealth of information now that we can look at, you know, for each of our videos. And I would recommend maybe after a couple days or a week after a video is uploaded to, you know, take a look at the actual individual analytics. So you can see this video is doing all right. Like this is the metrics we want to see for all of our content is average view duration, you know, around, you know, four and a half, five minutes when we do videos. You can see this one is almost 14 minutes long. You know, people are only viewing a third of it. There, the intro isn't too bad. There were, you know, this spike, and then there were two dips. So again, what can we learn from those to improve, improve future content? And you can see here by creating stuff that does really well for YouTube search, there's not this huge spike the day that we published, but doing stuff right with YouTube SEO, you can see that it started out, this band is essentially, you know, the your average video. So say video out of 10 from video four to say seven out of your 10 videos is this band. So if it's below this, it's worse than average. And if it's above, it means you're doing better than average. So you can see it wasn't till like almost a month after publishing this that it kind of turned into an above average video. But that's really the power of creating stuff for YouTube search if it's doing well it sometimes takes YouTube a little while to figure out where to put it in search results, but you can see here that, you know, that that strategy is essentially paid off and the video continues to perform better. You can see again here, you know, most of the views come from search, you know, average view duration, almost five minutes, 5% 5 click through rate. So this is kind of where we'd want to see It is actually showing up some in search. Here are some of the videos that, so there's a couple other kind of Canva YouTube banner videos that are starting to suggest it. And then here's a handful of different search phrases that it shows up for. You know, again, you can see, you know, the average view duration, watch time, and then here's, you know, those same stats. So again, some of the most important things to be re reviewing for your YouTube analytics is the click-through rates of your videos, have amazing thumbnails that everyone wants to click on, and your channel's gonna take off. If someone clicked on your video, are you retaining them? So review the audience retention, make sure that you're not doing anything that causes people to leave in your videos and they're watching as long as possible and maybe even watching some parts more than once. Within the audience tab, you can figure out the day and time that's best to be publishing new content. And if you're checking out the search phrases you show up for and also what videos are suggesting your content currently, it can give you ideas for future content. So if you want additional help on how to grow your YouTube channel, definitely check out our How to Grow on YouTube playlist. I'll link to that right here. There's a whole bunch of content, basically everything you need to know of how to grow your channel in 2021. Hope to see you in those and future videos. Bye-bye.